Welcome to the Local 88's COVID-19 update number six. I'd like to go over some issues, uh, more so with the CERB and then with the Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy, as well as the ERB with the, all three programs. I'll kind of go through some of the details that we've been going through with conference calls, correspondence, and letters. Um, I know I've said on this videos, on these videos a couple times now that we're pretty close. I believe we have some type of agreement coming up, but it's still going to take a few more days to get that resolution. Um, what I'd like to do is kind of explain what has been going on with, uh, with a lot of the information that we've been going back and forth with, and that's between the national, us, GM, and the Liberal government, and the ministers involved in finance, as well as employment, as well as local area MPs as well. It's my understanding Jerry Diaz, he, he has a meeting this week with the Prime Minister's office, so it's now in the Prime Minister's office as far as getting our sub agreed to be paid during the CERB period. When I say CERB, it means the EI ERB program that all of our members are on. In that format, you report every two weeks. With the CERB, you report every four weeks. I have one printout sheet, and what it is is an individual, Brett Tree in fact, he worked one week, and then he was laid off the next week. So he claimed earnings in the one week, and, and then no earnings in the other. They just disentitled him for the one week of earnings, and then the next week he got paid $500. We were told that might happen, but we weren't 100% sure, so we do have a, pay, a spreadsheet now that clearly shows that's how they're adjudicating it. If you're on the CERB program, you can't have more than $1,000, and if you earn more than $1,000, you'll be disentitled for the entire month. So this is one, one and the only thing so far that's been good out of the ER program. I did get some calls and some emails from uh, our members in regards to the Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy Program. Ford and Chrysler, we've been informed in our conference calls that they have approved that they may go this way. Now in saying that, they're going forward, I believe, at FCA starting May 18th. So from May, March 22nd to May 18th, they're not going with the CEWS program. And with Fords, I think they're going retroactive back to April 12th. So they have that set up where they get 75% of their wage and the company will get reimbursed up to 847 uh, from the government. General Motors is looking at this option. They're looking at it hard, um, but it sounds like they're running some roadblocks, both with IT, administrative, and whether they even qualify for the program. So they we're supposed to get an answer on that in the next couple of days as well. I spoke to my, uh, my member of parliament, Kate Young, on Wednesday. I had about 20 minute, 30 minute discussion with her on what's going on and why the Liberal government will not recognize our sub plan under the herb CERB program. I went through all the details. I explained how every Thursday, Prime Minister Trudeau gets up on Thursday and talks about new groups that are now entitled to money. And all we're asking for is money that we negotiated with the company. It'd be no cost to the Canadian government, no cost to the people of Canada. It's just the allowance that the minister has to make an exception to say they're gonna minister the CERB the same as they do with EI and sub. I said there's two things I want is I want the sub to be recognized under CERB and if that's not the case I would like some type of well detailed letter explaining to me and to our members why they cannot do this. So far to date all we got is we're not going to do it and that's not acceptable. We need something explaining and they didn't go with the regulations into the act but basically they have to have an, ex an explanation. This was rushed. Uh, rushed through so quick a lot of things weren't thought of they're going over the things that were missed this is one that's missed but again it's at no cost to the uh, government and it, it's just baffling why well why it's been taking so long the Unifor Nationals role in all of this is uh, we've been on many many conference calls weekends night calls and we're trying to get this resolved internally. We meet as a big group. We also meet as a smaller group to discuss some of the issues that we've been dealing with. They've been very instrumental meeting with government ministers, uh, MPs, and like I said, Minister Monroe and Qualtro, uh, Minister of Employment. And like I said, uh, Jerry Diaz is now with, um, have a meeting with the Prime Minister's office. So really hope to get this resolved. 
Correspondence with General Motors. Correspondence with General Motors has been very good. They recognize our collective, our supplemental agreement. It says we get 65% gross earnings on, a, on the case of a layoff. You go further and dig deeper into our language, it talks about employment insurance and what programs that we get for unemployment insurance. It actually talks about if they change employment insurance to a different program that we're still entitled. But we really have not had any negative comments from General Motors in regards to them owning up to their responsibility. The problem is their hands are being tied by the Liberal government with the language of the CERB. So again, with General Motors, they have committed to come up with some type of program and hopefully in the next few days we get some type of correspondence from them on looking on how we can pay this. The last thing on CERB is rotating layoffs. People are now coming back to work. A shift is in for two weeks, C shift's coming in next week, and then they're gonna be laid off. If you are on the CERB program, unfortunately, not unfortunately, but you're entitled to 16 weeks. Unfortunately, you haven't used up the 16 weeks yet. So what is gonna happen is you're gonna now be put back into the CERB program. You're not, some people have called and asked, well, I'm going back on layoff, can I go off on EI and sub? No, they're gonna throw you back into the CERB program or EI ER program till those 16 weeks are exhausted. So if we were to continue to have layoffs past the 16 weeks, I think 16 weeks, it's 16 weeks of entitlement. You know, it could take us into August or whatever before you exhaust that. When you report, please report your earnings, your full earnings for the week. And if one of the weeks is a layoff, report the week of layoff. You should still collect $500, like I said in the previous report that I had. Retirees, we have had a mass exodus of, of our members go on retirees. I believe it was April, we had 17. In May, we had 20. June, we have approximately 50 right now with the list still growing. And July, we have up to approximately 50 already with another month to go. In August, we're looking around 20 already. So, you know, in the last month, in the last three or four months, we've had close to 150, well over 150, close to 200 employees retire. Congratulations to all the members who have retired. Enjoy your retirement. What would I ask of the active members who have stuck around? We are unfortunately haven't been able to have the cake ceremony or even the last day where the member walks around, says hi to everybody they work with. I will be posting on our local website the names of all the retirees each month, first of the month. And what I would ask is if you see someone that you worked with, you know, haven't seen for a while, give them a text, give them an email, just say thank you and, you know, enjoy retirement. They'll get a big kick out of it. I don't know if somewhere down the road we can host some type of uh, retiree picnic or something like that, but it's an idea we can look at. But the way things are right now, it's likely gonna have to wait till next spring or summer. But I think that'd be a great idea to try to bring all the retirees back and kind of not give them more than a piece of cake, but give them something that, you know, show our appreciation that basically uh, all the years of service. But most of these people, pretty well all of them, are hit the 30 year mark. We had our first uh, executive meeting last night uh, that we've had in the last few months. We've canceled a couple of them. This was the May executive meeting. One of the, discussion, uh, one of the many discussions we had last night was elections. As some people are aware, we do have a few members in the leadership who have retired and we need to hold those elections. The constitution's pretty clear on when and how you hold an election and we're going through that format till COVID-19 came upon us. The Constitution, I've got something sent for me from the Constitution, but it's in regards to asking for an extension. So the executive decided that uh, we voted on, I'm gonna ask for an extension. I believe they allow a 12 week extension right now. If we need more, we'll look at it. Um, we just can't have a membership meeting. That, that's where we're gonna have the elections. We can't have a, a large gathering of like that. Um, if we have to look at alternative ways, one way would be electronic voting. There's a cost to set that up and time. Or we could look at some type of format where we stretch the election over a longer period of time and have bat paper ballots here and just have the election committee sit down here for a week or so to get the election over with. But we are applying for an extension and hopefully when the rules of the COVID, uh, COVID relaxes a bit, we can have a membership meeting. And the first membership meeting we have, we'll try and set up those elections take place. Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to COVID uh, video number six. 
Uh, just a reminder, all of C-Shift begins work next week for your official recall. Remember your shift starts at 10 o'clock, not 11. So all of C-Shift is 10 till 6 next week. A-Shift will work their second week of days, and that is 7 till 3. For C-Shift, your first day back, we won't be making trucks right away. You will take part in an orientation. That'll take a couple answers. You'll be able to answer your questions. You'll watch some slides. Um, a shift on days have now completed uh, three shifts after today. Overall, it's been going pretty good. It has been very hot. It's also been very hot with a mask on, which does make it a lot tougher. Um, this week with a shift on days, on Monday it was 7.30 before the last person finally got through the gates. On Tuesday it was 7.05, and today everybody was done before 7 o'clock. So it takes about three days to become the new normal, but it's not that big a deal if you're home wondering. After a couple days, it'll just fall into place pretty easily. Um, for team leader training and team leader relief, this is our first production uh, week back to work. One area that has had some work done is team leader coverage for training and for relief. The assembly department are working on a new protocol that they are asking the team leaders to follow. Um, they are meeting with the team leaders today. Hopefully it will be finalized tomorrow and then it will be shared through the department and will become part of the onboarding for new people next week for the team leaders and the PAs, and it'll be shared by then. So hopefully it's a new system. Looks like it'll work good, and hopefully that'll take care of some of the issues. Um, one issue we haven't talked about is the Cami gym. We had a big issue with the gym. I think most people are aware of that. Basically, the entire gym executive committee members have all been now, re have now been replaced. We plan on continuing with the gym, but as most people are aware, all gyms currently in Ontario are shut down. We are looking to get the gym going again in the future at some point. A new executive has been put in place. Um, the gym has undergone a complete thorough cleaning. The next steps are to bring an outside company in for a complete overview and an inspection for safety on all equipment. Um, your membership fees for July 1st will not be coming out. We understand the gym hasn't been working, so nobody needs to worry. Their money's not going to come out for July 1st. We'll wait for three more months. We also understand that we have money to owe people or time owed. If you do want to cancel your subscription or whatever, your membership, let me know. We'll get it canceled. However, if you want to keep the gym going, your membership, we are going to get it going again and we'll straighten out on how much uh, money is owed to everybody or how much time we owe people yet. Um, a hot topic right now is the vacation scheduling. Currently, we are booking uh, A shift scheduling this week. They're back at work. Um, B shift will not start officially until next week face to face. This week B shift reps are calling people at home. If you're in the top 20 or so in assembly, you're going to get pretty well everything you ask. So B shift have started. Remember for A and B shift, you only have about two weeks to get this done. So we are trying to get it going. C shift come back next week. C shift are here for four consecutive weeks. So we, are, we will be able to do uh, C shift while they're at work. A and B, it's much tougher. Uh, we are letting A shift know right now. We are calling you. If you're not at work, we are calling you. If you don't answer your phone, we are skipping you. We're leaving a message telling you just to call us back. We can't wait a couple days. We only have got, we're down to seven more days to get this done. The proxies are available on the website. Call your rep. There's lots of proxies being called in or just people calling into the reps. So if you're watching this, if you're, B sh or if you're C shift next week and not coming back, make sure we get your proxies or call the reps. Um, and also people need to understand how the vacation and time off works. We are not going to have any TPTs or STPTs working in the plant while an entire shift is laid off. Um, so in order to do that, we bubble up the vacation time for May, June, July, and August. It's, it increases significantly. We always bring in about 150 students to cover that additional time off. Those people are not at work. Therefore, our full-time people, when you're getting laid off, you're gonna be high volunteer, low force by team to come in. Right now, we have entire teams being forced to come in, especially in the high seniority departments. QC, material, stamping, people that generally get a lot of time off in June, you're going to be forced to, to come back in. And some of you, and quite a few of you next week, are getting forced to work midnights. I don't like it. And unfortunately, for midnight people, on your layoff weeks, you're going to be forced to come in and work on day shift. It's not great. We do not have the students in here to work. So again, we're asking for volunteers, and we are getting quite a few but we have a couple entire teams coming in next week on midnights that are supposed to be laid off. We've got 150 people, 200 people on vacation every week in that plant. And another thing we have going on with, as Joe mentioned, we have so many people taking the layoffs right, or sorry, taking the uh, pensions right now. 
We have 50 people retiring right now on Friday. Those 50 bodies are here this week. They're not here next week. There's 50 more holes we have to fill. The company's not going to hire anybody when we have 500 people sitting home collecting sub and EI every week or on CERB. So those people are going to be forced to work. Um, so we've got 140 jobs open right now. About a quarter of those jobs are from a, a SG canvas that we've been waiting to do for the bottom people in the plant. They're going to get put into homes. We've got about 120 jobs that are going to get posted next week. So when you come back to work, they're going to be held up for the next week. So B-Shift can see those postings as well. But that's about 143 jobs, I think, right now, plus any retirees that are still coming in. Not to mention the 150 people that are laid off. We have 300 openings. Divide that by the three shifts. We need at least 100 people minimum every week to come in and work during your layoff weeks. So worst case scenario, you're going to be forced to make full wages. Um, that's just the way it's going to have to be right now. Um, so you will see a ton of postings going up next week at some point, and they'll stay up for the next week after that. Um, as we said in last week's video, we are not going to have a production schedule up as you are doing your vacation picks. We are waiting for GM. They're waiting for the end of May to try and determine when we're going to three shifts. We are going to go to three shifts right now by the sounds of it at some point next year, or sorry, uh, this year at some point. If it's going to be a long haul, then we'll have a vote on it. But right now, I don't believe it'll be all that long. We will be three shifts at some point. We're just telling you, if you're booking your vacation and you really need a week off, book it off. You might get laid off during that week anyway, but if you're really looking for time off, we suggest book it off. For the schedule that's going to come out, we are trying to work on it right now. We're, we're pretending that GM wants to keep it going. We're trying different schedules. All we're going to tell people right now is when summer shutdown comes, where every shift will have pretty well the same amount of time at the plant as they head out. We are going to work it in six-week increments. So every six weeks, every shift's going to be laid out for two. A lot of you guys are going to be forced to come back in. But as the big picture looks, two weeks out of every six, you're going to be laid off. It's not going to be the same every six weeks. It is extremely hot in that plant in the summer. We are going to try our best to reduce the afternoon shift. That's the hottest shift by far, according to our history on our uh, heat relief. So we're going to do our best to run midnights and days. But every six weeks, you're going to get two weeks laid off. So it's not going to exactly flow exactly the same every six weeks. But every six-week segment, A shift, C shift, and B shift, we'll get two weeks laid off. That's just the way it's going to work. Uh, we'll try and get that out at some point in June whenever GM says we're good. As for heat relief, uh, we are currently negotiating a reduction in the heat stress requirements. Uh, the masks, they are, they are tougher. We are making some gains in that. We hope to have it all done and finalized by the end of the week. So there will be a little bit more heat relief coming depending on uh, Mother Nature. And also, just in closing, I want to do a special call out. If you see any of the Robinson cleaning staff in the building, uh, it would be nice if you personally thank them uh, as you see them. These people are paid well below 20 bucks an hour, way less than what they should be making. They are really our frontline workers in our plant to keep us safe. Their hours have been greatly extended. A lot of them have not had any time off at all, and they're not going to get any time off. A lot of them are working 12-hour shifts right now, and you can see it. I see a lot of the A-shift people have, have stopped me, have called me. They can't believe how much the Robinsons are just continuously moving, wiping, cleaning. They don't stop. It would be nice if we thanked them. Uh, they are kind of our frontline workers. It's a huge plant to try and keep clean, and they're doing their best. They've greatly, uh, our break areas used to get cleaned every 24 hours. Now they're getting cleaned twice every shift. So not to mention the washrooms, the hand railings, the doorknobs. They're constantly in motion and working, and it's hot for them, and they got their masks on as well. But if you could say thanks to them, I think it would go a long way. And that's it. Uh, we'll see you next time. Hi, everybody. Alex Blucky, Skilled Trades Rep. Uh, my uh, update's going to be rather short. We're back in the plant now. So unlike production, where they're dealing with uh, a ramp up, a slow start, uh, and the coming uh, rotating layoffs, by June 1st, we should all be back. Uh, we will not be having any rotating layoffs. Everyone will be back in the plant, including apprentices, as of June 1st. So that's a, a positive. So if you haven't had your phone call to re be recalled yet, you will be getting it probably tomorrow. Uh, if you haven't got one by Thursday afternoon, give me a call at the plant, and uh, I'll see what's going on. Maybe they don't have your correct information or whatever. So uh, we'll all be back. Um, the monthly uh, meetings that we've had, membership meetings, they've been canceled uh, for the last few months, as we know, because of COVID. 
So therefore, obviously our skilled trades quarterly meetings that I have uh, have also been, uh, been put off. I mean, I know they're very good uh, uh, sessions to get together. Uh, we can relay information to one another. I get a lot of good feedback from all the trades from all the different departments. We uh, have representation usually from all the departments, all the trades, and uh, it's been very helpful for me and hopefully inf informative to you as well. Uh, we will be getting those back up and running once we can all get together and have meetings of more than five people. Uh, once the monthly membership meetings get going, I will uh, be restarting our quarterly meetings as well. A uh, few of the issues that we've had, obviously the sub, I think uh, Joe explained that very well. It's been a very frustrating battle. I've had conversations with people in the plant about what's happening, what's going on. Uh, they're very difficult conversations. They're hard for me to explain because I don't really understand the, the delay myself. Uh, but yes, we uh, are working on it constantly and we'll get there in the end. A um, few issues that we're having in the plant uh, just now with the heat, um, you know, with the masks that we're wearing, uh, we're not uh, working constantly like someone on the line, but sometimes when we do work, uh, the, the work can be intense. I was with some of the guys from facilities the other day, uh, Kurt and Brad, they came down from the roof, they were just sweating buckets. I told them, you know, make sure that you hydrate yourself, drink lots of water if you need to take a break at any time. If you're doing a welding job, a uh, very uh, labor-intensive uh, repair or whatever, and you need to take a break, take it. If you get a hard time from a supervisor, let me know. I will intervene on your behalf to make sure that people understand that we're not uh, going to jeopardize our health. Uh, we're all getting older, and we need to take care of ourselves. Um, the apprentices coming back, a couple of them, uh, three of them are going to be placed in departments. Um, they're within their last thousand hours of their apprenticeship, so they're going to be considered manpower. Uh, it's, it's a different scenario for us. We're usually uh, working well past the time that they're graduated to get them placed in a job. Uh, because of our short staffing that we've had to deal with, uh, we're getting less and less trades all the time to, to cover the, the different departments. They're going to be placed in when they return to work next week, uh, three of them, three electricians. So. If everybody could help them out, get them up to speed, that would be greatly appreciated. I'm sure they'll, they'll be asking for, for your assistance uh, and going forward there. For the other apprentices, we're going to continue them uh, in the same shops that they were in before all this happened. I know they missed a lot of time in each of the shops, so that's important that we uh, uh, finish off their training in those areas. Uh, vacation selection uh, should have been done while I was off. Obviously, uh, that didn't happen. Uh, I've been going around to the different departments. Some departments have started already, uh, made uh, significant progress in dealing with it. Others have not. Uh, they want to make sure that everybody's back. I was in a couple of departments today and I said, hand out the proxies, get it started. Uh, we want to make sure that we get this done as soon as possible. Uh, vacations are important to all of us, as we know. We'll be uh, moving along with that no later than Monday. Uh, so everyone, please stay safe. Uh, and we'll talk to you soon, and we'll see everybody back in the plan on Monday. Take care. In closing, I'd like to just say, enjoy your retirement to all the ones who are retiring now. Welcome back. A-shift, I know you picked the hottest week to come back, and it's got to be brutal, but B-shift, A-C-shift is coming back next week, and then B-shift comes back for a couple weeks then. So welcome everyone back. Stay safe, and thank you.